Coming up next, I'll address the crisis in our nation and tell you five things to prepare for the future of work. We'll take your calls and your chats. And it all starts right now. I'm coming to you live from Ramsey Studios in Nashville, and you're joining a conversation about who you are, what you were created to do, where you want to do it, and how you can get there. It's all about you. It's all about your purpose and your contribution. No matter your race, your economic situation, the Ken Coleman Show believes with tremendous fervor and passion that you are supposed to do work that somebody out there needs. You matter tremendously. And I know that you watch this show to get the clarity you need to be able to start out on that journey and do work that you love and make a difference. But I, as well as all of you, sat this weekend and watched our country burn. Actual flames, emotions. These are troubling times. And I want to address what I think I must address. And that is this. We will not see systemic change, systemic racism be dominated and driven out of our great nation until white Americans do four things and do four things intentionally and passionately. I want to tell you where I come from before I tell you what I believe. We, white Americans, need to be aware of and need to be doing now and for the rest of our lives. My wife Stacy and I have two black sons. And when I saw the Ahmaud Arbery story and now the George Floyd story and I watched those horrific videos I did not watch them through the eyes of a white man. I watched them through the eyes of a father who saw my boy's faces on George and on Ahmad. It's horrific enough, no matter your race, to watch those awful videos and to read of those unconscionable acts. But when you see someone you love and you see their face and you see the possibility that it could happen to your boys, it's hard to truly grasp it. So as a white man, I will never be able to put myself in my boy's shoes or my friends who are black. I can't ever truly put myself in their shoes, but there are four things that I can do. And so I'm speaking to white people who live in this great country. There is a tremendous responsibility on us to help our nation heal. And I want you to consider these four things. Number one, I want you to be intentional to know A black man or woman. And I don't mean casually as an acquaintance. I mean in relationship with them. And then when you're in relationship, you know them. You know a black man or woman. Would you please, please, please listen to them? I don't mean hear their stories, hear their emotions, Hear their experiences. I mean, listen. The third, as you listen, the third thing is understand. You will then see 
things that you never saw before. You will hear things you never have heard before, and you will feel things you've never felt before. Understand where the black man and black woman come from and what they deal with. And then finally, love a black man or woman. Love them. Love them. Love them as you would any friend or family member. Love, love, love because you're friends with them and you're going to love them. You could choose to love anyone. We need to actively love our black brothers and sisters. And when we do, the feelings of fear and prejudice, frustration, anger, whatever you've grown up with, that you have placed a filter on black men and women. Remove the filter and love will remove the filter. I know this because I've experienced it and I speak from my heart because I've experienced it. This is what must happen in the hearts and minds of white Americans. We must do these four things. I would also call out to legislators, the lawmakers and the law enforcers. We must address national policies that are clear cut and not allow police brutality to be handled within the department. This must be national legislation, statewide legislation that is very clear on force and how all men and women are detained. But we must act swiftly and clearly. And then one final thing. Just when I thought that I could not grieve anymore for what has been happening in our country, I see inexplicable images of white people showing up at peaceful rallies and throwing bricks, breaking windows, inciting violence, setting things on fire. Why? You're trash. You're scum. The only reason that a white man or woman should show up at a protest is to lock arms with a black brother or sister, to hold their hand or stand in front of them. It's embarrassing and unconscionable and outrageous and debased and evil. You're trash. Go back to the cave you crawled out of, the rock you crawled out from under, and stay there. Take your hate with you, your inciting of violence. All you want to do is cause more pain, and you are evil. We can be better. We will be better. We must be better. My heart grieves for my family members, my friends that are black and are having to deal with the absolute evil forces that judge them, penalize them, punish them, persecute them because of the color of their skin. We are free people. But not all of us are truly free yet. Stand for freedom. And stand strong. I will. So we continue. Thank you for letting me share my heart. Let's continue the all-important conversation of men and women getting clear on what they were created to do. All colors. All of you were created to do something through your work, to contribute. 
let us be about the business of being the best versions of ourselves. And so that's why we do the Ken Coleman Show, 844-747-2577, 844-747-2577. Let's start it off with Michelle in Columbia, South Carolina. Michelle, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. Thanks for taking my call. You bet, Michelle. What's going on? So I was furloughed from my job at the end of April and I was told it should only be a month, but now it looks like I'll be restarting later in June. Okay. My husband's still working full time. Uh, we're on baby step, um, like four five and six. Wow. I do have a side hustle that I'm working, yeah. but, um, I'm wondering if I should just keep that side hustle going and wait until my job starts back up or if I should get some kind of temp job of some type. Yeah. Well, it, it doesn't seem that the, uh, that the money issue is really what's driving this. Is that, is that correct? You don't need the money right now. Is that correct? No. Yeah. No, that's correct. I mean, we just bought a house, so yeah. I've got plenty to do, and there's always stuff there. Yeah. It's just um, security. Yeah, well, feeling, but, you, but you know? yeah, I get it. But you're, <laughs> but you, you guys are A students. You know, uh, yeah. you're in really good shape. Um, I don't have a problem with you going and getting something part time, but you know, I think now's mm-hmm. the time to actually pour that extra time that you have by being furloughed into that side hustle. That's that's what I like because I think if you go get another job to bring in some more money right now, just to kind of you know uh, mm-hmm. you know keep money coming in because you got the house and all that and you love that security, um, I think it takes away from the side hustle. And so if it were yeah. me, I would go. Well, I'm furloughed now. It looks like till the end of June. Uh, I'm going to use this downtime to get the house settled and pour into my side hustle. That's what okay. I would do. What's the side hustle? Um, well, I'm an actor and a singer, and I do some freelance writing. Yeah. So well, there's not a whole lot of acting, work. not a lot of acting and singing going on right now. Correct. Yeah, 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 it's a little weird right now, and I yeah. produce theater. That's my full time yeah. job that I'm going back to. Oh well, you know, here's the deal. So. Um, there's no right or wrong answer here. If you want to go get another job, that's fine. Um, because I didn't realize that, you know, your, your, your side hustle has kind of been pressed pause as well. Yeah. Uh, but you could start doing some more voiceover work that, you know, um, mm-hmm. so yeah, I'm fine. If you go get another gig right now, that's fine. It's no big deal. Um, if, if you had more okay. of a product or service side hustle, then I was going to tell mm-hmm. you to put all your time into that because that's valuable. But, uh, I think it's a 50, 50 and you do whatever's best. Uh, but you guys, congratulations on being uh, really financially responsible, walking out Dave Ramsey's baby steps really beautifully. Great job. Uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota is where we go next. Tyler joins us there. Tyler, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Hi Ken. First of all, I just want to say thank you for starting out the call today the way that you did. I think it's something we all need to hear right now. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. Uh, so I guess my question is I've – through some of your resources and listening to your shows, I figured out what my passion is and now I'm just looking for some help on how to make sure I can make it happen okay, great. and be successful enough to support. Awesome. Okay. Tell me what the, my income now. Great. Tell me what the dream is. Um, financial coaching, financial coaching. Okay. And are you off and running? Has you, have you started it? Are you in the training process? Tell me where you are in this moment. <laughs> I'm just started. I'm working through the financial coach master training. Great. I've um, got just a few more lessons left. Okay. Um, unfortunately, the job I'm in now would prevent me from practicing while I'm still employed there because it would be like competition. Almost. Oh, okay. Conflict of so interest. Right. Okay. What do you make right now? How um, much, how much money? I, about. 40000 a year in my position. Okay, so that's what we have to replace, all right? So right. E- even if it's, um, excuse me, got to clear my throat. Allergy's still bad. Uh, so <laughs> even if this was not a conflict of interest, Tyler, uh, we, you would and you were able to do the financial coaching and the day job, you would still have to replace the 40K or be close to replacing the 40K in the sense of having some savings put aside before I'd want you to transition out of the day job to the dream job, okay? Now sure. we've got the added challenge, which is you can't do the financial coaching while you're working with these folks. So that means it's pretty simple, okay? I didn't say it was going to be easy. I'm just saying that the solution <laughs> is simple. And the simple solution is you need to go get another day job that will 
allow you to then do the financial coaching on the side um, so that there's no conflict of interest. That's what you have to do. That's what you've got to replace. And when you do that, it doesn't even have to be, you know, something that you really, really love. You know, I'm, I'm fine with it just being, a, you know, one part of my three-part, you know, test uh, on getting clear, which is do use what you do best to do what you love to produce a result that matters deeply to you. I'm fine with you just doing the, well, I'm good at it because it's short term anyway. And your real right. dream is to be a full-time financial coach, correct? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So like I said, simple may be easy, may not be, but it's as simple as you got to replace your current job with another day job that pays you 40 or more. And then that allows you to then go, go after it on doing this, the financial coaching on the side. And our, our financial coach master training program here at Ramsey Solutions is so good because not only do they get you qualified, they actually coach you on how to build your business. So if you do what they tell you to do, you're going to eventually replace your full-time job. Okay, sure. So one of my concerns was, and I know I go over this later in the training, is like obviously finding enough clients to be, you know, successful consistently. Well, they're going to train you on that too, but I can just tell you that, you know, I wrote this book called The Proximity Principle, which works beyond just getting connected for a job. It'll help you build up clients. But you know sure. way more people than you think you do. So I'll just give you a quick answer to this. And uh, you can add this to what you're going to get trained on. But let's just say uh, that you know 100 people. And I think it's a low number in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Let's say you know 100 people. Well, how many people do those 100 people know? Well, if they all know 100 people, you see how the math gets really crazy. Okay. And now you have access to thousands of people. And that's really true. And so as you're getting trained, uh, you know, from our Ramsey, you know, uh, financial coach team, they're going to be teaching the business concepts and how to market the business and all that kind of stuff. But you are your best marketing. And so you are going to reach out and you are going to connect to folks and let them know what you're doing and what you offer. Uh, maybe do a couple of steeply discounted coaching sessions or maybe a couple free ones. Uh, maybe do some at your church or maybe offer one at the YMCA or some type of community center. And then you begin to spread the word. Uh, Madison, let's give Tyler a copy of my book, The Proximity Principle. And Tyler, I specifically want you to read about the web of connections. It's in the third section of the book called Practices. And it's going to walk you through in detail what I just told you on how to really spread the word. In this situation, you're not trying to get a job, okay? You are trying to build your business. And the proximity principle works every time. 844-747-2577 is the number. Let's go to the chat room. And let's start with uh, Rachel. She says, Ken... Um, what are your thoughts on this issue? I feel led to help people discover their calling, but I'm struggling in that area myself. Is that a true calling? This is a really insightful question here. And my answer is, I don't know. And Rachel, you need to call the program. You need to call Madison. You can call her right now. You can call her tomorrow, the next day. I'm here every day, 12 to 2 Eastern, Monday through Friday. Because I don't know enough in, in what you've just given me to know if it's really a true calling versus you long for this yourself and in longing for it and really desiring to get clear and figure out your own calling, you go, well, maybe I'd like to help others. And that's a natural thing. It's almost a form of transfer. You know, this idea of I'm going to transfer my feelings uh, uh, onto other people. And so it might be. But this is why you call the program. I want to know more about the type of work that you really love to do, okay? We look at first, what do you do best? That's, that's your talent. That's hard skills, soft skills. But we really want to focus on the other two indicators that allow you to discover your sweet spot, right? That is the work you love to do most. Think of a task, a function uh, you know, that you really enjoy taking part in. And then the third piece is mission, that is, the result of your work. See, all work produces a result, okay? And so we want to look at the work you really love and the result that you really love. Those two come together, and so that'll let us know if this is really a calling or you're transferring your own emotions onto this. I mean, frankly, 
we got a bunch of team back there that have, you know, Madison, Amanda, they all have sat in sometime for Kelly on day show. And this has happened in our two years, uh, coming up on three years, two and a half years. There are a lot of people who listen to my show, listen to Dave's show, and because they it, the message connects to them, then they go, well, I want to do what Ken does, or I want to do what Dave does. Like our last caller was to be a financial coach. I didn't ask him. I didn't ask Tyler, but I can guarantee you, Tyler wants to be a financial coach because of Dave. So there's nothing wrong with that, okay? But we want to make sure that we confirm that. And I appreciate the question. So, Rachel, that's a long-winded answer. I should have just said, Rachel, call me. Because if you call me, I can dive in. But I wanted the rest of you to get that. Um, Marquita writes in, I have the option to opt into a volunteer separation agreement with my employer with a set end date or uh, the chance of a non-voluntary layoff. What should I choose? Well, again, uh, this would be a great phone call because I'd like to know more about what you know. But let's assume here that you've got a pretty good feeling based on some facts around the office, maybe from your leader. Um, let, let's just say this. Let's say it's 70, 30, 70% chance that you're going to get laid off. And that's why they're giving you the option for the volunteer separation agreement. If you can justify in your mind uh, with facts that there's a really good chance you're going to get laid off, I would take the deal and move on. Feels like that's what's going on. So in this situation, I'd probably take the best of my options. And again, you got to weigh it. Okay, if I take the volunteer separation agreement, is that better than if I just get laid off? Probably is. I'd take the best option and move on. 844-747-2577 is the number. Let's go to another question. Um, free to play. I have a question. I'm going late in my life to finish my schooling, and I was wondering if I finish close to 40 years old, will I be a liability or would I be able to get a job? I'm going for business administration. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of growing evidence. Uh, as I talk to recruiters and HR folks that it is tough in your fifties. I think if you're under 40, I don't think you're going to deal with that problem, but I always want to challenge the process here if you want to go into business administration, I'd love to know what that looks like in the real workplace. And what I mean by that is this. Business administration is the name of a major, right? So what are you majoring? Business administration. I want to know what it is you want to do. You want to lead a team? You don't need a business administration degree. Well, Ken, it says on all the websites, you need to, that's a bunch of garbage. If you have a connection or multiple connections and you use the proximity principle and you've actually led some people before, you can get that job. Okay? I promise you. So let's let's be real specific about the type of work you want to do in the workplace and how that business administration degree actually qualifies you. You know, I'm not knocking business school. I think business school is great. But at the end of the day, you give me a person that's fresh out of business school with a business administration degree and you in this and and you put them next to somebody who is even same age but has actually had some experience, maybe even leading smaller teams, or ready for this, I'm really going to freak some of you folks out with this one, has actually followed good leaders. I'm going to take the person who's led a small team or been in some type of leadership role or followed a really good leader. I'm going to take them over the person that's fresh out of school. Why? Because you got book knowledge versus street knowledge. I'm going to the street every day of the week and twice on Sunday. There it is. I did it again. I stepped on the degree people's toes. Listen, folks, qualifier here. No, it's not a qualifier. Let's just tell you what I think. The degree doesn't make you a leader. You know what makes you a leader? Having followed somebody and seen good leadership, and then you step up and actually lead somebody. It has nothing to do with the business classes that you took. There it is. I said it, and I'm proud of it. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577. Saw an article from a psychologist that was published in Fast Company, Love the Magazine, five things you can do to prepare for the new future of work. So I see these things. I scour these articles for you folks every day. So I'm reading this, 
And this is from the CEO of Job Case, so psychology background. And I thought this was really good. Five things, going to roll through these real quick. I'll comment on these as we go. Get ready to change jobs more frequently. Now, we're already seeing this uh, among millennials. Prior to COVID, millennials were known for moving jobs almost every year. It's just a generational thing. They saw their parents and grandparents work the same job for 30 years. and They're like, that just can't be good. And so some of that's going on. But now, because of the millions and millions of people that are unemployed, um, people are going to be moving around a lot. And that's not a bad thing. You need to be mobile. So be ready to change jobs because it's what you're going to have to do to get where you want to go, given the massive disruption and shifting in the marketplace. Uh, number two, keep learning. Uh, we've talked about this a lot, uh, not a whole lot to add here, but the more you learn new technology specifically, other things that you can say, hey, I've added this to my tool belt, just makes you more valuable. Uh, make sure that you uh, uh, reward employers who put workers first. And the idea here is, is, you know what? Choose to go places where there's a really, really great culture because when talent begins to be specific to say, you know what, I could go... Uh, I've got an I've got a, an A option and a B option. They're both pretty much the same, but option A has got a great culture. The idea is you send a message when you choose to work at certain places. Uh, number four, help others. You know, a person who is constantly putting their hand out to help others. It, it, this is above and beyond everything else you do. Just being helpful. It's going to make you wildly attractive and promotions are going to come your way. And then finally, take care of yourself. Um, listen, it's really important that you take care of your physical body and your mental and your emotional, physical, mental, emotional. Got to do it. Got to take care of yourself because we are in a new world right now as it relates to uh, the volatility uh, that has happened because of COVID. None of us know how this thing is going to shake out. I'm certainly hoping for positive things, uh, believing optimistically that things are going to get better. Um, but there might be a whole lot of turbulence in the meantime. And you staying healthy, physically, mentally, emotionally, uh, is not just for you and the toll on your person, but actually makes you even more attractive. People could say, hey, this is a healthy person. And you're going to stand out like a lighthouse in a otherwise topsy-turvy, choppy, think of choppy waves. That's what a lot of people are going to act like. And if you stand firm and you're a beacon, well, that's good for you. 844-747-2577. Hey, a call to those of you out there who are really close to stepping into the dream job or you already have. One of the things that that Joe and I, we talked about when we launched the Ken Coleman show is that we wanted to celebrate you. What I love about my mentor, Dave Ramsey's show is the debt free scream where people cross that finish line many times here in our building, other times on the phone and they are debt free, but they call in and they recount their story on the air. And it is a moment of celebration for them, but also a moment of inspiration for the viewer and the listener. So here's the deal. If you're close or you've already stepped into the dream job and this show had some small part in it because you did it, uh, we would love for you to email us, ask at kencoleman.com. Email ask at kencoleman.com. Put dream scream in the subject line and Madison will get with you and we'll get you on the show. Uh, all right, new deal at the Ken Coleman store. So it's good grief. It's June 1. Where, where did the time go, Joe? Uh, so we got a new deal. It's the bundle of the three Proximity Principle formats. You get an autographed copy of the book, The Proximity Principle, plus the ebook, plus the audio book, all for $25. That's a savings of $35. Good gracious. So there you go. The book will give you the step-by-step -step plan to get in front of the right people and in the right places so opportunities knock on your door. So go check it out, kencoleman.com. Get the bundle what a good deal that is. 
seven seven. We're gonna go to Taylor in just a moment. Let's do a social media question. Um, let's go to John on Instagram. Ken, should I apply at a company if I have no connections there? No. I was looking to the control room. Nobody was paying attention, apparently, to the show. Uh, Amanda was. She just didn't know the answer. The answer is don't ever apply at a company if you don't have a connection. Because you probably do have a connection. You just haven't worked it hard enough. But if for some reason you've worked all of your connections, you don't have a connection, don't apply. Because you know what? You're not going to stand out. I know. People go, come on, Kent. No. Here's my point. Find a connection. Find a connection. Because you can't. 844-747-2577 is the number. Deltona, Florida, not Daytona. Delta, okay. Never heard of Deltona. Uh, Taylor is there. Taylor, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken, how are you? I'm living the dream, Taylor. What's going on? Good deal. Well, my question for you is, I've been a graphic designer for well over a decade, technically almost 16 years now, and I'm still only 33 years old, and uh, I'm just wondering how can I take the next step in my design career as for being a becoming a creative director or an art producer of some kind where I get the chance to lead a team if I've never had the opportunity to do that before. Yeah. Well, you know, the good news is for 16 years, you've been a graphic designer, which is tremendous experience, tremendous for a creative director. And the short answer, Taylor, is you need to use the proximity principle. That's why I wrote the book. The proximity principle says in order for Taylor to be a creative director, Taylor's got to get around creative directors and get in places where there are other creative directors. So let's break that down even further, get super specific. The first part I think you get. All right. So in Deltona, Florida and surrounding areas, or, you know, if I've got some friends that are creative directors in other cities and across the country, I got to make sure I go get intentional, spend some time with them, whether it be on the phone, uh, Zoom or in person. Uh, and then where are creative directors hanging out? What's that look like? Mm. Are there associations online? Are there uh, events that are eventually going to come back online where those people are going? Where are those people hanging out? And by constantly showing up and meeting people, I'm going to get my work out there. And every time I meet somebody who's a creative director um, and say, hey, I've done this work, they go, well, listen, I'm hiring an associate creative director. I think you'd be great for the job. That's how this happens. You're either going to step into a creative director job because you've made some wonderful connections and relationships happen, and they go, Taylor's ready for the next level. Really like Taylor. Been talking to Taylor for about six months. Been talking to Taylor about a year. And, uh, hey, Taylor, we got a spot. I think you're great. Do you understand what I'm saying? It, it, it sounds so simple because it is. But you're going to have to really use the proximity principle, get around people that, uh, are, that hire creative directors, right? So in the book, right. are you familiar with the book at all? No, no. Okay. I'm not. So let me let me give you two archetypes of people that I write about in the book. Okay. Number one are producers. Now these are people who are actually creative directors. Okay. Or maybe they run marketing agencies, and so they hire creative directors. You understand me so far? Mm. Right. Yep. You want to get around producers. You want to leverage your connections so that you can have coffee with those type of people. I know you're thinking right now in your head of about four or five creative agencies or marketing agencies in your area. Yes or no? Yep, absolutely. All right. So how would you get to the A? So the producers are two types of people, maybe three. The creative directors in those agencies, the people who hire or lead the creative directors, or maybe the owner of the agency. Those are the three types of people that are producers. Now, there's also a professional that I talk about in the book. And this is the person that you're probably not going to be able to get to. They may run a massive creative agency or a marketing agency in New York or LA or some other city, and, and but they've got a, a blog or they've got a podcast or they've written a book or they do webinars, and so you're following them and digesting everything that they do. Do you follow me so far? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, man. And so what's happening is you're learning from them. Let me give you an example from my life. When I started into broadcasting, I had no experience, didn't have a degree. So I would watch the Larry King show. I would watch Bob Costas. I would watch old David Frost interviews. I wanted to learn from the best. I would tape. Uh, 
I don't even know if I ever told you this, Joe, but I used to record Regis and Kathy Lee because I wanted to watch Regis. I wanted to watch how he conducted an interview, went into commercial break, came back in from commercial break. Regis was as good as anybody there is. He was a master and, of live stuff. And, and so, Taylor, those were people that I've never met, but I could still access them via online right or television and watch them and learn from them so those are two people but here's the good news taylor i'm going to give you my book you can have whatever format you want hard copy uh audiobook or ebook how's that sound uh, wonderful thank you because listen brother i wrote the book for you as a number one bestseller i know you're new to the program but the book is going to go into detail and listen it's an easy read there's homework at the end of each chapter so get after it and it's going to i'm going to be your guide throughout the book you got me yes, thank you so much but listen one final thing i want you to know i totally believe in you because 16 years doing what you've done i want to make sure you go into this process with a ton of confidence because you really do have the chops you'll get there thank you so much ken all right brother appreciate you thank you for calling well joe looks like my time is almost up but i want to all let you know that I care deeply for everybody. Thank you so very much. You matter. You do have what it takes. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, this is The Ken Coleman Show. Press on.